In the quaint town of Eldridge, April Fool's Day was taken seriously, with pranks ranging from harmless jokes to elaborate schemes. But the events of 2024 would leave the town in a state of fear, forever changing the nature of this day. The first incident occurred at the local high school, where a group of students planned a prank on their stern biology teacher, Mr. Hensley. They concocted a scheme to release three harmless snakes into the classroom, knowing Mr. Hensley's notorious fear of reptiles. However, when the day arrived, the snakes turned out to be venomous vipers, mysteriously swapped by an unknown person. Chaos ensued as the snakes slithered out during class causing panic and fear. Mr. Hensley was bitten, and the school was evacuated, with the authorities baffled by how the harmless prank escalated into a life-threatening situation. Meanwhile, across town in the local museum, a prank was set by a few employees to scare the night guard, Thomas, known for his love of ghost stories. They arranged dummies and props from a historical exhibit to create a haunted scene. That night, Thomas encountered more than just the staged frights. Real spectral figures roamed the halls, whispering ancient secrets and vanishing when approached. His terror was dismissed as an overactive imagination until the surveillance footage revealed glimpses of the inexplicable apparitions, turning his prank into a haunting mystery. The third incident involved the town's notorious prankster, Old Man Jenkins, who lived at the edge of Eldridge. Each year, Jenkins outdid himself with pranks that left the town both annoyed and amused. This year, he promised a spectacle never to be forgotten. Late at night, eerie lights and strange sounds emanated from his property, leading curious townsfolk to investigate. They found Jenkins' house abandoned, with a bizarre setup of mirrors and machines, creating a labyrinth of illusions. As they navigated the maze, the reflections began to distort showing not their images, but ghastly figures, leading them deeper into a twisted version of Jenkins's house. As the townsfolk stumbled through the maze, the boundary between prank and reality blurred. Each turn revealed more about Jenkins's obsession with the supernatural, his desire to touch the world beyond. The journey through the mirror maze ended in a room filled with ancient artifacts and a book open to a page titled Summoning the Veil. In the dimly lit room, the air thick with dust and the scent of old parchment, the townsfolk stood frozen, staring at the open tome. The book, bound in tattered leather, contained writings in a language none recognized alongside intricate diagrams and symbols that seemed to pulsate with an eerie energy. As they pondered their next move, the mirrors surrounding the room shimmered, their surfaces no longer reflecting the present, but rather displaying shifting scenes of past April Fool's days, each more sinister than the last. It became clear Jenkins' pranks were a facade for a deeper, darker obsession with the occult, each year's prank building upon the last, culminating in this final act. Outside, the rest of Eldridge remained unaware of the nightmare unfolding at Jenkins' property. The town's April Fool's Day festivities continued, with laughter and screams of mock terror filling the air, a stark contrast to the real horror trapped within the mirror maze. Back at the high school, the chaos had settled, but the fear lingered. The 
venomous snakes were captured, and Mr. Hensley was recovering. But questions remained. How did the snakes get switched? And why? The investigation led to a dead end, with no fingerprints or evidence to point to the perpetrator. The town began to buzz with theories of a curse, an unseen force that took delight in transforming harmless pranks into dangerous threats. Meanwhile, at the museum, Thomas the night guard was undergoing questioning. His claims of ghostly figures were met with skepticism until the security footage was reviewed, showing fleeting images of figures draped in historical garb their faces obscured, and movements eerily fluid. The museum staff could not explain how the exhibits seemed to come to life, nor could they identify the figures in the footage, leading to rumors of haunted artifacts and restless spirits. In Jenkins' house, the group of townsfolk, now captives of the maze, felt the walls closing in. The room with the ancient book became the center of a growing storm of supernatural energy. The artifacts around them, collected from corners of the world, resonated with the book's presence, glowing with an otherworldly light. The leader of the group, a local historian named Clara, tentatively reached out to touch the book's pages. As she made contact, the language twisted morphing into readable English, revealing the true purpose of the artifacts. They were tools for breaching the veil between the living and the dead, designed to merge realities on the night of April Fools, blurring the line between prank and peril. As Clara read aloud, the air grew colder, and the shimmering mirrors began to crack the barriers between worlds weakening. Shadows danced at the edges of the room, growing bolder, taking form as the spectral figures from the museum footage, their whispers growing into coherent voices, recounting tales of Eldridge's forgotten past, of rituals and sacrifices made in the name of power and knowledge. The group realized with horror that Jenkins had planned to use this night. When the town was distracted by harmless pranks and laughter, to enact a ritual that would tear down the walls between the living and the dead. Hoping to harness the chaos for unknown purposes, as the spectral figures grew more tangible, their features became clear they were the lost souls of Eldridge, those who had vanished or met mysterious ends over the centuries, each a pawn in Jenkins's long game of dark ambition. The room pulsed with their anger and sorrow, the air thick with the power of their unfulfilled lives. Clara, holding the book, realized that it acted as a conduit its pages a map of spells and incantations that Jenkins had used to bind these spirits to his will. The artifacts in the room, collected from dark corners of the world, were not mere collectibles, but instruments of a grand, sinister orchestra, each playing a note in the symphony of the veil's tearing. The townsfolk, united in their fear and resolve, decided to reverse the ritual, to close the breach before the veil was torn completely. The book contained the reversal spell, but it required a sacrifice of pure intent, someone who would willingly give themselves to the veil to restore balance. Outside, the town's festivities reached a fever pitch, the laughter joy, a stark contrast to the desperation within the mansion. Unbeknownst to the revelers, their very reality was fraying at the edges, the spirits of the past bleeding into the present, 
their forms glimpsed in the corner of one's eye, their whispers heard in the wind. Back at the high school, the biology class, now a crime scene, held a clue unnoticed in the chaos. A symbol, matching one in Jenkins's book, hidden under a desk. It hinted at the true scale of the prankster's plans. Each location in town, part of a larger pattern. A ritual circle that, if completed, would anchor the spirit world to the physical, making the veil's tear permanent. In Jenkins's house, the group prepared to enact the reversal spell, each member taking a role in the intricate dance of ancient words and gestures. The spectral figures watched, their expressions a mix of hope and despair, their fates tied to the ritual's outcome. Clara, stepping forward as the sacrificial offering, approached the altar where the book lay. Her colleagues, bound by a newfound camaraderie, and driven by the urgency of their plight, began the chant. Their voices, a harmonious plea to the forces they sought to appease. The artifacts around them hummed with energy, vibrating with the intensity of the chant. The mirrors cracked further, the scenes within them flashing between past and present, revealing the intertwining fates of the town and its ghostly inhabitants. As the ritual neared its climax, the boundary between the two worlds shimmered. The room filled with a blinding light, the spirits converging on Clara, their essences swirling around her in a vortex of light and shadow. Outside, the town celebration came to a sudden, inexplicable halt. The air charged with a palpable tension revelers feeling an unspoken fear, a collective shiver down the spine of Eldridge. Within the heart of Jenkins's mansion, the ritual reached its zenith, the air vibrating with the power of unbound spirits and ancient magic. Clara, surrounded by the vortex of spectral energy, recited the final words of the spell, her voice strong and clear resonating with the authority of one who understands the gravity of her sacrifice. The mirrors shattered in unison, the fragments suspended in the air, reflecting not the room, but glimpses of other times and places, each shard a window to a moment of Eldridge's haunted past. The spectral figures, now clear and distinct, hovered around Clara, their faces etched with expressions of gratitude and sorrow, their eyes reflecting the centuries of trapped existence. As the last word of the spell echoed through the chamber, a profound silence enveloped the room, the kind of silence that follows the cessation of a mighty storm, the light intensified consuming Clara and the swirling spirits, drawing them into the book, which pulsed like a beating heart, its pages flipping wildly as if caught in a tempest. Outside, the town of Eldridge, suspended in a moment of collective anticipation, felt a sudden release, as if waking from a shared nightmare. The eerie calm that followed palpable, the night sky clearing to reveal stars unseen for generations, their light untainted by the spectral gloom that had lingered over the town. In the mansion, the remaining townsfolk watched in awe as the last of the light receded into the book, which now lay silent and still on the altar. The artifacts, their glow diminished appeared mundane, stripped of the dark power that had infused them. The room, once a nexus of otherworldly energy, was now just an old, 
dusty chamber in a crumbling mansion. The spirits, along with Clara, were gone, their departure marked by a peace that filled the space, a tranquil end to centuries of unrest and manipulation. But the story of Eldridge was far from over. The shattered mirrors, now mere glass, began to tremble. A soft vibration that grew steadily in intensity. The townsfolk, their relief short-lived, turned their attention to the fragments, which started to levitate, forming a new, unbroken mirror surface in the air. The new mirror, a portal of shimmering liquid glass, reflected a landscape not of this world, but of the one just beyond the veil. It was a world of twilight and shadows, where the spirits now resided, a place of peace and penance for Clara and the souls she led to salvation. As the townsfolk contemplated the mirror, a figure appeared in its surface, Clara, her expression serene yet tinged with sadness. She communicated without words, her message clear. The veil was restored, but the connection between the two worlds remained. A permanent bridge born from the night's events. The implications were profound. And as the townsfolk left the mansion, the reality of their new existence began to dawn on them. Eldridge was now a town touched by the otherworldly. Its fate intertwined with the spirits on the other side of the mirror. In the weeks that followed, the town slowly adapted to its new normal. The spectral appearances became less frequent, but were accepted as part of daily life. The mansion, once a place of fear, became a site of pilgrimage a place to communicate with the lost, and a reminder of the night when the veil was torn and mended. Yet, the tranquility was underpinned by a subtle unease, a collective memory of the mirror's power and the thin barrier that now separated the living from the dead. The events of April Fool's Day 2024 had irrevocably altered Eldridge, leaving its people in a world where the past was not just a memory, but a living, breathing part of the present. As the year progressed, the people of Eldridge found themselves caught between curiosity and fear, drawn to the mansion and its mirror portal, yet wary of its implications. The mirror, a silent sentinel, stood as a constant reminder of the thin line between their world and the spectral realm. Reports of strange occurrences began to surface, objects moving on their own, whispers in empty rooms, and fleeting shadows that roamed the streets at night. The town, once vibrant and bustling, took on a quieter, more contemplative demeanor its residents living in respectful coexistence with the unseen. The Eldridge Historical Society, seeing an opportunity to preserve and study the events, established a research center near the mansion. Scholars and paranormal experts from around the country descended on the town, eager to explore the phenomenon. Their investigations revealed fluctuations in the barrier between the worlds especially on anniversaries of significant historical events, suggesting that the veil was more malleable than previously thought. Meanwhile, a curious pattern emerged. Children in the town began to report dreams of the other side, vivid visions of the spectral world that were both enchanting and unsettling. They spoke of a great tree at the heart of the spirit realm, its branches stretching into the sky, and its roots deep in the earth, pulsating with the same energy as the mirror. These dreams led to a communal project 
to map the spirit world as described by the dreaming children. The project, a blend of art and oral history, took shape on a large canvas in the town hall, becoming a living document of the town's connection to the beyond. One night, during the anniversary of the ritual, the mirror's surface rippled intensely. And for the first time since the night of the ritual, a voice came through. It was Clara's, her tone urgent, warning of a new disturbance in the spirit realm, a darkness growing at the edges, threatening to breach the restored veil. The town council, heeding the warning, organized a vigil at the mansion where the townspeople gathered to support Clara and the spirits in their fight against this new threat. As they stood watch, the air around the mirror thickened and shadows writhed within its depths, hinting at a struggle within. This vigil became a ritual in itself, an annual event where the town united in solidarity the spirit realm, reinforcing the barrier with their collective will and belief. Each year, the darkness was kept at bay, but it grew stronger, more persistent, a reminder of the constant vigilance required to maintain the balance. The line between Eldritch and the spectral world blurred further, the town becoming a place of pilgrimage not only for scholars, and the curious, but for those seeking solace from the pain of lost loved ones, the mirror provided a place of communion, a bridge between the living and the dead, where messages were exchanged and closure sought. As the years passed, the town adapted to its new reality, its identity inextricably linked to the events of that fateful April Fool's Day, but beneath the surface, questions lingered. What was the source of the growing darkness in the spirit realm? How long could the balance be maintained? And what role would Eldridge play in the coming conflict between worlds? The answers to these questions remained shrouded in the mists of the unknown, the town standing as a beacon of light against the encroaching shadows, a sentinel at the crossroads of the living and the dead the past was not just remembered, but lived, and the future was a story yet to be told. In the shadowed corridors of Eldridge's history, whispers of the past mingled with the murmurs of the present, forging a tale that was continuously unfolding. The mirror, once a portal of curiosity and fear, had become a solemn icon of the town's guardianship over the fragile boundary that separated their world from the one beyond. As the darkness in the spirit realm grew, so did the town's commitment to understanding and protecting the veil. Eldridge's historical society, now a council of the veil, included members from both the living and the spectral. Communicating through the mirror to strategize and share knowledge. In one such meeting, a revelation emerged. The darkness was not merely a residual malice from Jenkins's rituals, but a sentient force, an entity banished long ago, seeking re-entry into the world. This entity, known in the ancient texts as the Shadowed One, had found a foothold in the spirit realm exploiting the weakened veil to gather strength. The town, united in purpose, launched a dual-fronted effort to combat this threat. On the physical side, the council fortified the mansion, turning it into both a research center and a sanctuary, where artifacts and knowledge were amassed to reinforce the veil. On the spectral side, Clara and the freed spirits worked to contain the entity's influence. Their efforts visible in the mirror 
as a luminous battle in the shadowed landscape of the other world. As the conflict escalated, the dreams of Eldridge's children became more intense. Their nocturnal journeys revealing not just the beauty of the spirit realm, but also the creeping taint of the shadowed one. They spoke of a great tree, the heart of the spirit world, now ensnared by dark vines, pulsing with the corruption of the entity. These dreams were not mere figments, but prophetic visions, guiding the town's efforts. Artisans and seers collaborated to craft talismans that mirrored the tree's form. Objects imbued with the collective will and protection of Eldritch, designed to strengthen the spirit's fight against the encroaching darkness. As the anniversary of the ritual approached, the boundary between the worlds thinned, the air around the mirror crackling with tension. The town gathered, not just in vigil, but in defiance. A community standing as one against the encroaching darkness. Their voices joined in a chant that resonated with the power of unity and resolve. In the spirit realm, illuminated by the light of the great tree, Clara led the spectral forces in a counter-assault against the shadowed one. The battle reflected in the mirror, was a spectacle of light and shadow. Each clash reverberating through the veil felt as tremors in the physical world. The children of Eldridge, sensitive to the fluctuations of the spirit world, experienced shared visions during this time. Their slumbering minds walking the paths of the spirit realm, witnessing the battle and bringing back crucial insights to aid the town's efforts. This annual confrontation became a tradition, a part of Eldridge's culture, its significance known to every inhabitant. Each year, the town fortified its defenses, the rituals and preparations more elaborate, guided by the wisdom of the past and the revelations of the present. As the struggle continued, the identity of Eldridge intertwined ever more deeply with the spirit realm, the town becoming a living symbol of the battle between light and darkness. The mirror, once a curiosity, now stood as a revered monument, a gateway to understanding, a bridge between worlds, and a battleground for the soul of both realms. The story of Eldridge, with its roots deep in the past and branches stretching into the unseen, was a living narrative of resilience and courage, a testament to the town's role as the keeper of the veil, where every April Fool's Day was not just a reminder of the thin line between jest and truth, but also a reaffirmation of their guardianship over the delicate boundary that separated their world from the shadows beyond. The town of Eldridge, now known as much for its guardianship of the Vale as for its quaint charm, faced an evolving challenge. Each April Fool's Day marked not only a historical moment of jest, but also a solemn reminder of the thin veil that separated them from the spectral realm and the ever-looming threat of the Shadowed One. The Council of the Veil, vale, with members from both the living and the spectral, worked tirelessly to strengthen the barrier. They delved into ancient texts and collaborated with experts in the supernatural, crafting a network of wards and sigils around the town each a bastion against the encroaching darkness. As the entity's attempts grew more desperate and cunning, the spectral battles witnessed in the mirror became more intense. The spirit realm 
alight with the clash of energies. Clara, now a revered figure in both worlds, led the spectral defense. Her strategy and insights crucial in countering the Shadowed One's advances. The children of Eldridge, their dreams more vivid and prophetic, played an unexpected role in the town's defense. Their innocent connection to the spirit realm provided untainted perspectives and solutions that eluded even the most experienced seers and historians. They spoke of hidden paths and forgotten allies within the spectral world, elements that Clara and her forces could use to their advantage. In one significant dream shared by several children, they discovered an ancient grove in the spirit realm where the roots of the great tree delved into a pool of pure light, the essence of the realm's life force. This grove, shielded from the Shadowed One's corruption, held the key to revitalizing the tree and, by extension, the strength of the veil. The town's strategy evolved from mere defense to active restoration focusing on healing the great tree at the heart of the spirit realm. Artisans in Eldridge, guided by the children's visions, created a series of intricate devices and charms designed to channel the town's collective energy and goodwill into the spectral realm, aiding Clara and her forces. As the next April Fool's Day approached, a palpable tension filled the air, the town bracing for what many believed would be a decisive confrontation. The preparations were more elaborate than ever. The entire town, involved in crafting a web of protection and empowerment that stretched from the physical to the spectral. The night of the vigil, the town gathered around the mansion, the air vibrating with chance and the energy of anticipation. In the spectral realm, a similar gathering took place. Spirits from all epochs of Eldridge's history converging to lend their strength to Clara and the Living Tree. The mirror, a silent witness to this unity, began to glow, its surface rippling like the surface of a disturbed pond. Within its depths, the battle unfolded, a mesmerizing dance of light and shadow. Clara, at the forefront, wielded the combined energies of both realms, her form radiant and powerful. The line between Eldridge and the spectral world blurred further, the town becoming a place of pilgrimage, not only for scholars, and the curious, but for those seeking solace from the pain of lost loved ones. The mirror provided a place of communion, a bridge between the living and the dead, where messages were exchanged and closure sought. As the years passed, the town adapted to its new reality, its identity inextricably linked to the events of that fateful April Fool's Day, but beneath the surface, questions lingered. What was the source of the growing darkness in the spirit realm? How long could the balance be maintained? And what role would Eldridge play in the coming conflict between worlds? The answers to these questions remained shrouded in the mists of the unknown, the town standing as a beacon of light against the encroaching shadows, a sentinel at the crossroads of the living and the dead where the past was not just remembered, but lived, and the future was a story yet to be told. In the shadowed corridors of Eldridge's history, whispers of the past mingled with the murmurs of the present, forging a tale that was continuously unfolding. The mirror, once a portal of curiosity and fear, had become a solemn icon of the town's guardianship over the fragile boundary that separated their world from the one beyond. 
as the darkness in the spirit realm grew, so did the town's commitment to understanding and protecting the veil. Eldridge's Historical Society, now a Council of the Veil, included members from both the living and the spectral, communicating through the mirror to strategize and share knowledge. In one such meeting, a revelation emerged. The darkness was not merely a residual malice from Jenkins's rituals, but a sentient force, an entity banished long ago, seeking re-entry into the world. This entity, known in the ancient texts as the Shadowed One, had found a foothold in the spirit realm, exploiting the weakened veil to gather strength. The town, united in purpose, launched a dual-fronted effort to combat this threat. On the physical side, the council fortified the mansion, turning it into both a research center and a sanctuary where artifacts and knowledge were amassed to reinforce the veil. On the spectral side, Clara and the freed spirits worked to contain the entity's influence. Their efforts visible in the mirror as a luminous battle in the shadowed landscape of the other world. As the conflict escalated, the dreams of Eldridge's children became more intense their nocturnal journeys, revealing not just the beauty of the spirit realm, but also the creeping taint of the shadowed one. They spoke of a great tree, the heart of the spirit world, now ensnared by dark vines, pulsing with the corruption of the entity. These dreams were not mere figments, but prophetic visions, guiding the town's efforts Artisans and seers collaborated to craft talismans that mirrored the tree's form. Objects imbued with the collective will and protection of Eldridge, designed to strengthen the spirit's fight against the encroaching darkness. As the anniversary of the ritual approached, the boundary between the worlds thinned the air around the mirror crackling with tension. The town gathered, not just in vigil, but in defiance. A community standing as one against the encroaching darkness. Their voices joined in a chant that resonated with the power of unity and resolve. In the spirit realm, illuminated by the light of the great tree, Clara led the spectral forces in a counter-assault against the Shadowed One. The battle, reflected in the mirror, was a spectacle of light and shadow. Each clash reverberating through the veil felt as tremors in the physical world. The children of Eldridge, sensitive to the fluctuations of the spirit world, experienced shared visions during this time. Their slumbering minds walking the paths of the spirit realm, witnessing the battle, and bringing back crucial insights to aid the town's efforts. This annual confrontation became a tradition, a part of Eldridge's culture, its significance known to every inhabitant. Each year, the town fortified its defenses rituals and preparations more elaborate, guided by the wisdom of the past and the revelations of the present. As the struggle continued, the identity of Eldridge intertwined ever more deeply with the spirit realm, the town becoming a living symbol of the battle between light and darkness. The mirror, once a curiosity, now stood as a revered monument, a gateway to understanding, a bridge between worlds, and a battleground for the soul of both realms. The story of Eldridge, with its roots deep in the past and branches stretching into the unseen, was a living narrative of resilience 
and courage, a testament to the town's role as the keeper of the Vale, where every April Fool's Day was not just a reminder of the thin line between jest and truth, but also a reaffirmation of their guardianship over the delicate boundary that separated their world from the shadows beyond. The town of Eldridge, now known as much for its guardianship of the Vale as for its quaint charm, faced an evolving challenge. Each April Fool's Day marked not only a historical moment of jest, but also a solemn reminder of the thin veil that separated them from the spectral realm and the ever-looming threat of the shadowed one. The Council of the Veil, vale, with members from both the living and the spectral, worked tirelessly to strengthen the barrier. They delved into ancient texts and collaborated with experts in the supernatural, crafting a network of wards and sigils around the town, each a bastion against the encroaching darkness. As the entity's attempts grew more desperate and cunning, the spectral battles witnessed in the mirror became more intense. The spirit realm, a light with the clash of energies. Clara, now a revered figure in both worlds, led the spectral defense. Her strategy and insights crucial in countering the Shadowed One's advances. The children of Eldridge, their dreams more vivid and prophetic, played an unexpected role in the town's defense. Their innocent connection to the spirit realm provided untainted perspectives and solutions that eluded even the most experienced seers and historians. They spoke of hidden paths and forgotten allies within the spectral world, elements that Clara and her forces could use to their advantage. In one significant dream shared by several children, they discovered an ancient grove in the spirit realm, where the roots of the great tree delved into a pool of pure light, the essence of the realm's life force. This grove, shielded from the shadowed one's corruption, held the key to revitalizing the tree and, by extension, the strength of the veil. The town's strategy evolved from mere defense to active restoration, focusing on healing the great tree at the heart of the spirit realm. Artisans in Eldridge, guided by the children's visions, created a series of intricate devices and charms designed to channel the town's collective energy and goodwill into the spectral realm, aiding Clara and her forces. As the next April Fool's Day approached, a palpable tension filled the air, the town bracing for what many believed would be a decisive confrontation. The preparations were more elaborate than ever. The entire town, involved in crafting a web of protection and empowerment that stretched from the physical to the spectral. The night of the vigil, the town gathered around the mansion, the air vibrating with chance and the energy of anticipation. In the spectral realm, a similar gathering took place. Spirits from all epochs of Eldridge's history converging to lend their strength to Clara and the living tree. The mirror, a silent witness to this unity, began to glow, its surface rippling like the surface of a disturbed pond. Within its depths, the battle unfolded, a mesmerizing dance of light and shadow. Clara, at the forefront, wielded the combined energies of both realms her form radiant and powerful.
in the quaint town of Eldridge, nestled between whispering forests and silent hills, the legend of the black-eyed kids was more than just a story. It was a chilling reality that haunted the nights and fogged the days with an eerie sense of dread. The townspeople whispered of encounters with these strange children, whose eyes were as dark as voids, absorbing all light and hope. Mark, a newcomer to Eldridge, dismissed these tales as local superstition, a way to spice up the town's mundane existence. That was until one fateful night, during a storm that unleashed fury like never before when a knock echoed through his home. Hesitant yet curious, Mark opened the door to find two children, a boy and a girl, drenched from the rain, their faces pale and forlorn. We're lost and cold, they murmured in unison, their voices as cold as the wind. Can we come in to warm up? Mark, Feeling a surge of paternal instinct, nodded and stepped aside. But as they entered the light, he froze. Their eyes, black as coal, void of sclera or iris, stared back at him. A deep abyss that seemed to pull at his very soul. As they settled in, Mark felt an increasing sense of unease the air thickening around him, the walls of his home seemingly closing in. The children sat quietly, their gazes never leaving him, their black eyes gleaming with an unknown intent. Mark's mind raced with questions and fear, the stories of the townsfolk now a terrifying possibility in his reality. Deciding to investigate further, Mark excused himself and went to his study, frantically searching for any information about these enigmatic children. As he sifted through old newspapers and online forums, he uncovered the 10 terrifying truths about the black-eyed kids, a compilation of encounters and research that revealed the dark nature of these beings. The first truth struck him with chilling clarity. These children were not of this world or any known dimension. They were harbingers of calamities, appearing before disasters, feeding on the fear and chaos that followed. As Mark read on, each truth unveiled more of the horror. Their presence was an omen of death. Their invitations to help them a trap snare the souls of the unwary. With each truth revealed, Mark's fear escalated, the storm outside mirroring his turmoil. The house creaked and groaned as if alive, the shadows cast by the flickering lights taking on menacing shapes. He realized too late that by letting them in, he had not just opened his home but also a gateway to a realm of darkness he could not comprehend. As these revelations dawned on him, the lights in the house flickered out, plunging him into darkness. Thunder rumbled, a sinister symphony that seemed to mock his growing dread. In the pitch, the darkness in Mark's home grew denser, almost solid, pulsating with an unseen heartbeat. The whispers morphed into discernible voices, chanting in a language that twisted the air, a sinister liturgy that seemed to resonate with the very fabric of the house. Mark, with flashlight in hand, tried to pierce the overwhelming blackness, but the light dimmed as if swallowed by the shadows themselves. Mark's pulse quickened as he felt the presence of the black-eyed kids throughout the house, not as physical beings, but as pervasive entities, their essence woven into the very walls and air. 
the storm outside escalated, its fury a reflection of the chaos unfolding within. As he ventured through the darkened corridors of his home, each step felt like a descent into a realm where reality was governed by nightmare logic. The familiar layout of his house twisted into a labyrinthine maze, rooms leading to impossible spaces, stairs spiraling down into abyssal depths. The voices grew louder, a maddening chorus that seemed to mock his plight. Mark stumbled upon a room he did not recognize, filled with ancient artifacts and tomes, the air thick with the dust of ages. In the center stood an archaic mirror, its frame adorned with symbols that throbbed with a malevolent energy. Drawn to the mirror, Mark peered into its surface, which swirled with spectral mists. The reflection showed not his own image, but a series of shifting scenes, each more disturbing than the last. Lands ravaged by shadowy figures with black eyes, civilizations crumbling under their gaze, and the earth itself splitting, revealing chasms of darkness from which the children emerged. The scenes in the mirror revealed the origins of the black-eyed kids, beings from a dimension where light was consumed by shadow, where their eyes had adapted to see through the darkness of their malevolent world, seeking portals to brighter realms to extinguish their light. Mark realized the mirror was not just showing him these visions, but serving as a gateway, the children's conduit between their world and his. The chanting voices crescendoed, synchronizing with the storm's howl as the mirror's surface began to ripple, the barrier between worlds thinning. A cold wind emanated from the mirror, carrying whispers that coalesced into a single, intelligible voice, the voice of the Black-Eyed Children Collective. They spoke of their endless hunger for the light of life, of souls, of energy that our world possessed in abundance. They told of their plans to merge their shadowed realm with ours, to extinguish the light and consume the darkness. As the voice spoke, the boundary between Mark's world and the mirror's abyss weakened further. Shadows leaked from the mirror, staining the room with darkness, creeping towards him with insidious intent. Mark felt a pull, a psychic tug, drawing him closer to the mirror, to the world of the black-eyed kids. Outside, the storm reached a climactic fury, the house groaning under its assault. Inside, the shadows stretched out, ensnaring furniture, walls, reality itself, bending it towards the mirror's dark will. Mark, caught in the gravity of the unfolding nightmare, struggled against the pull. His mind, a battleground between the will to resist and the growing despair sown by the children's whispers. With each moment, the mirror's world crept closer, its cold, dark fingers brushing against the edges of his soul, tempting him with visions of the power and knowledge that lay beyond, in the darkness, with them. As the barrier thinned to a mere veil, and the room around him became a borderland between light and darkness, Mark stood on the precipice, the fate of his world hinging on his next actions. The black-eyed kids, no longer mere stories or children, revealed their true form in the mirror. Ancient, timeless entities of the dark, their eyes windows to the void, promising oblivion and terror. The story hung in the balance, the terror palpable. As the night deepened, the storm raged, and the darkness waited. 
eager to flood through the gateway into the world. The very structure of Mark's home convulsed as if in agony, the boundary between realities fraying at the edges, the mirror's surface, now a swirling vortex of darkness, pulsed with a sinister life, its whispering chorus beckoning Mark to step forward and embrace the void. With the storm outside echoing the chaos within, Mark, driven by a desperate courage, decided to confront the nightmare head on. He grasped the only item he thought could offer some protection, an old family heirloom amulet that his grandmother once claimed was imbued with protective powers. Clutching it tightly, he approached the mirror, his reflection lost in the swirling abyss. The room behind him faded, sounds and sights warping, as if reality itself was bending. Succumbing to the pull of the mirror, the whispers grew into a cacophony, voices overlapping in a language that was ancient and alien, yet Mark understood it with a chilling clarity. They spoke of the end of light, the rise of eternal darkness, and their reign over a world devoid of hope. As Mark stood before the mirror, the amulet in his hand began to glow, its light a stark contrast to the engulfing darkness. The glow illuminated runes that appeared on the mirror's frame, runes that seemed to counteract the mirror's power. Mark, sensing an opportunity, pressed the amulet against the mirror, and the room trembled as if caught in the throes of an earthquake. The mirror's surface reacted violently, the swirling darkness recoiling as if burned by the amulet's light. From the depths of the mirror, the black-eyed kids stared out, their faces contorted in rage and fear as their gateway into Mark's world resisted their efforts. Outside, the storm reached its zenith, thunder and lightning crashing in symphony, as if the elements themselves were at war. Inside, the battle between light and darkness raged, the amulet's glow intensifying, casting luminous arcs through the room, etching ancient symbols of protection and containment onto the walls, floor, and ceiling forming a cage of light around the mirror. Mark, fueled by a mix of fear and defiance, chanted words he didn't know he knew, the language of the amulet's ancient magic, a counterspell to the dark incantations of the black-eyed kids. With each word, the light from the amulet pulsed stronger, the symbols brighter, tightening the luminous cage around the mirror. The children's voices turned to screams, their figures writhing in the mirror's abyss, as the reality they sought to invade pushed them back, sealing the breach. The air in the room crackled with energy, a storm of celestial force that countered the darkness, repelling it, sealing the gateway. As the last word of the chant left Mark's lips, a final surge of light burst from the amulet, striking the mirror with the force of a meteor. The mirror shattered, its fragments dissolving into nothingness before they could touch the ground. The void within it extinguished, cut off from Mark's world. Silence fell, the storm outside abating, its rage spent. Mark stood alone in the quiet aftermath, the glow of the amulet fading, its power expended. The house, once a nexus of cosmic conflict, was now just a house again, its walls silent, the shadows merely shadows. But the victory was not without its cost. The breach between worlds, though sealed, 
had left its mark on Mark and his reality. He could feel it, a change within him and around him, a knowledge of the darkness beyond the light, of the worlds that lay in the shadow of his own. As the dawn broke, shedding light on the night's events, Mark knew that the story of the black-eyed kids was far from over. They were out there, in the depths of the dark, waiting, watching, their eyes forever hungry for the light of new worlds to consume. And in the quiet of the new day, Mark understood that his encounter with the black-eyed kids was but a chapter in a much larger saga, a cosmic play in which he had become an unwitting actor. The shattered mirror was a closed door, but not the only one. And the darkness behind it was vast and filled with eyes, watching, waiting for the next opportunity to breach the light. As the first rays of dawn pierced the remnants of the storm, casting a serene light over the town of Eldridge, Mark stood amidst the silence of his home, grappling with the night's harrowing events. The shattered mirror and the night of terror were tangible evidence of the otherworldly intrusion he had faced. Yet, as the sun rose, casting away shadows, a deceptive peace settled over everything, masking the scars of the nocturnal battle. Mark's encounter with the black-eyed kids had irrevocably altered his perception of reality. The world around him appeared the same, yet he saw it anew. Aware of the thin veils separating his existence from the dark realms he had glimpsed, the silence of his house no longer felt comforting. It hummed with the echo of the void that had almost consumed it driven by a need to understand and confront the lingering threat. Mark delved into research, seeking out ancient texts and esoteric knowledge that could shed light on the true nature of the black-eyed kids and the dimension they hailed from. His quest led him to forgotten lore and hidden truths about the cosmic balance between light and darkness, and the beings that dwelled in the shadows, ever seeking to breach into the lighted world. Mark's days were consumed by study, his nights haunted by vigilance, as he prepared for the possibility that the black-eyed kids might return, or worse, that other, more powerful entities from their world might attempt to cross over. He fortified his home with symbols and wards drawn from his research, turning it into a bastion against the darkness. Weeks passed, and the memory of the night's terror began to fade in the town's collective consciousness, becoming yet another strange tale in Eldridge's history. But Mark knew better than to let down his guard. The shattered mirror had been a conduit, but he sensed it was not the only link between the worlds. His research uncovered references to a network of the nether, a series of gateways scattered across the earth, thin spots in the fabric of reality where beings like the black-eyed kids could cross over under certain cosmic alignments. Mark realized that Eldridge, with its history of strange occurrences and dark tales, might be built upon one such gateway. The thought was chilling, and Mark knew he needed help. He reached out to scholars, mystics, and others who had encountered the dark realities, forming a network of allies who shared his experiences and fears. Together, they pooled their knowledge, piecing together a map of potential gateways, including the one he suspected lay beneath Eldridge. As autumn waned 
and the nights grew longer. A palpable sense of unease settled over the town. Pets went missing. Strange lights were seen in the woods, and whispers of dark figures roaming the streets at night began to circulate. Mark felt the coming storm, not of weather, but of cosmic forces converging. The signs were aligning, pointing to a significant event, a potential breach that could open the floodgates for the Dark Realm to spill into the world. With the help of his newfound allies, Mark began to prepare for the worst. They set up surveillance around suspected thin spots, conducted rituals to strengthen the barriers between worlds, and gathered artifacts believed to have the power to close or control the gateways. One night, as a rare celestial alignment approached, the air in Eldridge thickened with impending doom. The stars seemed to dim, and the moon cast a blood-red light over the town, reflecting the foreboding tension that gripped Mark's heart. He and his allies gathered at the suspected heart of the gateway, an ancient site in the woods outside town, where ruins of indeterminate age hinted at a past steeped in mystery and darkness. As the celestial alignment reached its peak, the ground trembled, and the air vibrated with unseen energy. Shadows coalesced in the clearing, forming shapes that were human-like, yet dreadfully wrong. The darkness from the mirror's realm was seeping through, testing the strength of the barriers they had erected. Mark and his team stood ready, armed with knowledge, artifacts, and a determination to prevent the invasion. The night air echoed with the sounds of two worlds colliding, Howls of the dark entities clashing with the chants of Mark and his allies. The ground where the ruins lay cracked open, revealing a glowing fissure, a direct gateway to the black-eyed kid's world, threatening to unleash its horrors upon the earth. As the battle between light and dark raged, the fate of both worlds hung in the balance thin line between them, wavering, ready to be redrawn by the events of this fateful night. In the heart of the ancient woods, as the glowing fissure widened, the air became saturated with a palpable malice. Mark and his allies, encircled around the breach, chanted incantations and brandished talismans faces etched with concentration and fear. The darkness from the fissure pulsed, testing the strength of the wards they had placed, seeking weaknesses, hungry for entry. From the depths of the fissure, the black-eyed kids emerged, their forms more terrifying than before, distorted by the energies of their realm. They were no longer mere children, but twisted beings of shadow and malice, their black eyes devouring the light, casting chilling silhouettes against the blood-red moon. Mark, feeling the strain of the confrontation, pushed his powers to their limits, channeling the ancient knowledge he had acquired into a protective shield around the site. The ground shook, as the two realms collided, the fabric of reality itself buckling under the pressure of the cosmic battle. Amidst the chaos, a deeper, more powerful presence began to manifest from the fissure. A dark matriarch of the black-eyed kid's realm, whose very essence twisted the air and turned the forest's whisper to screams. Her eyes, vast and void, held the despair of eons, and her arrival marked a tipping point in the struggle. The team's efforts, formidable as they were, 
began to falter under the weight of this new adversary. The protective barriers shimmered, faltering, as the matriarch's power surged, her presence a blight upon the land, corrupting everything it touched. Mark, realizing the gravity of the situation, called for a desperate measure. Among the artifacts they had gathered was an ancient relic, said to contain the essence of a long-forgotten deity, a being of light and creation, antithesis to the dark forces they now faced. Its power was immense, unpredictable, and potentially catastrophic, but the situation left them with no choice. As the matriarch stepped forth from the fissure, her form towering, shadowing the woods, Mark and his allies formed a circle around the relic, their voices uniting in a singular, powerful incantation. The relic began to glow, its light a piercing beacon against the encroaching darkness, its energy resonating with the chants, amplifying them, echoing through the woods and beyond. The light from the relic intensified, blinding, as if a sun had risen within the clearing. It pulsed, sending waves of force across the landscape, bending trees, shattering rocks, and pushing back the shadows. The black-eyed kids, their forms now revealed as mere extensions of the matriarch's will, recoiled, their screams merging into the matriarch's roar of rage and fear. The battle reached its zenith, the forces of light and darkness clashing in a tumultuous fury, tearing at the seams of reality, threatening to unravel the very essence of the world. Mark, at the center of the storm, felt the relic's power coursing through him, a torrential river of ancient energy, demanding to be channeled, guided, directed. He focused on the matriarch, her form now wavering under the assault of light, her dark essence dissolving at its touch. With a final, desperate cry, he directed the relic's power towards her, a lance of pure light that struck her heart, her core, her being. The impact resonated like a cosmic bell, silence following its peal, spreading outwards, enveloping everything. The light receded as quickly as it had appeared, leaving the clearing bathed in the soft, serene light of dawn. The fissure in the earth closed, the landscape stilled, and the ancient woods sighed, their whispers now laments for the night's terrors and triumphs. The matriarch was gone, her essence dispersed, but the victory was not without cost. The balance between the realms had shifted, the barriers weakened, Threads of reality stretched thin. Mark and his team, exhausted but alive, knew this was but a reprieve. The darkness had been pushed back, not vanquished. The black-eyed kids and the myriad other beings from the shadowed realm would seek entry again, drawn by the light of the world, hungry for its life and energy. As they left the clearing, the ancient woods standing sentinel around them, the first rays of the sun piercing the canopy. Mark felt the weight of the night's ordeal and the heavier burden of the nights to come. The battle was over, but the war, the eternal struggle between light and darkness was just beginning. In the aftermath of the battle, the once tranquil town of Eldridge seemed to hold its breath. The memory of the night's terror lingering in the air like a bad dream. Mark, now recognized as the town's silent guardian, retreated into seclusion, his home becoming both a sanctuary 
and a command center for monitoring the thinning veils between worlds. The victory at the ancient site had given them precious knowledge and time. But it was clear that the forces they had repelled were merely the vanguard of a much darker army. The black-eyed kids, with their void-like eyes, were the harbingers of a deeper evil, scouts for the true horrors lurking in the dimensions beyond. Mark's research intensified, his days and nights blending into a continuous cycle of study, rituals, and consultations with his network of allies. Together, they deciphered ancient texts and tracked celestial patterns, looking for clues to prevent further incursions. They learned that the cosmic alignments, which had facilitated the breach, were becoming more frequent, the barriers between worlds growing ever weaker. As autumn faded into winter, the air grew colder, not just with the season, but with a palpable sense of impending darkness. The townsfolk of Eldridge, once skeptical, now regarded Mark with a mix of reverence and fear, their skepticism eroded by the undeniable reality of the supernatural threats at their doorstep. Reports of strange phenomena increased, shadows moving against the logic of light, cold spots appearing randomly, and an oppressive sense of being watched pervading the town. Mark knew these were not mere hauntings, but symptoms of the weakening fabric of reality, the bleed through of the other realm's malevolent energies. One night, as a chilling fog descended on Eldridge, a series of disappearances shook the town. People vanished without a trace, their last known locations marked by an unsettling coldness and the faint echo of children's laughter, a sinister reminder of the black-eyed kid's presence. Mark and his team sprang into action, their investigations leading them to a network of underground tunnels beneath Eldridge, long forgotten, but now pulsating with the dark energies of the other realm. The tunnels formed a labyrinthine network, intersecting directly beneath the ancient site in the woods, the epicenter of the recent breach. Guided by the dim light of their torches and the arcane knowledge they possessed, Mark and his allies navigated the tunnels, the air growing colder and the oppressive sense of dread intensifying with each step. The walls seemed to whisper in the voices of the lost, their words a mosaic of warnings and pleas. Deep within this subterranean maze, they discovered a cavern, its center dominated by a stone altar, ancient and covered in the same runic symbols that had appeared during their battle in the woods. The altar pulsed with a dark energy, a direct conduit to the realm of the black-eyed kids, its surface stained with recent offerings, hinting at a cult or followers who worshipped the dark entities. Realizing the extent of the corruption, that the enemy was not just beyond but within, Mark understood that the battle for Eldridge was more complex than he had anticipated. The town itself sat upon a nexus of dark energies, a focal point in the ongoing war between the realms. As they prepared to disrupt the altar's power and seal the tunnels, a new wave of terror gripped them. From the darkness of the cavern's farthest reaches, the sound of approaching footsteps echoed, a rhythmic march that resonated with the beat of the dark heart of the other realm. Emerging from the shadows were not just the black-eyed kids, but their followers, townspeople whose eyes had turned black. 
their wills enslaved by the Dark Realm's influence. They moved with a singular purpose, protectors of the altar, ready to sacrifice everything to maintain the bridge between worlds. Mark and his team, surrounded and outnumbered, faced the stark reality of the situation. The battle was not just to save Eldridge, or even the world, but to preserve the very essence of humanity from the encroaching darkness. As the cultists advanced, the air thick with the power of unspoken spells, and the cavern pulsing with dark energy, the scene was set for a confrontation that would determine the fate of all realms. A showdown between the light of human resilience and the shadow of otherworldly conquest. In the cavernous depths beneath Eldridge, Mark and his allies stood their ground. The light from their torches casting long shadows against the encroaching darkness of the cultists and the black-eyed kids. The air crackled with energy. The ancient runes on the stone altar glowing ominously, throbbing with the pulse of the dark realm. With the realization that the town, and indeed their very reality, was teetering on the brink of annihilation, Mark knew desperate measures were required. He recalled the ancient relic that had once sealed the breach, its remnants now a source of potent, albeit volatile, energy. Drawing it forth, he felt its power surge, responding to the immediate threat of darkness. As the cultists and their black-eyed wards closed in, Mark channeled every ounce of his knowledge, his fear, and his hope into the relic, the air around it shimmering with potential. The runes on the altar responded, a symphony of light and dark playing out in the underground chamber. With a defiant shout, Mark thrust the relic towards the altar, releasing a torrent of light that enveloped the room, blinding friend and foe alike. The energy clashed against the dark aura of the altar. A battle of wills manifested in a physical tumult that shook the very foundations of the earth. The light prevailed, piercing the darkness, shattering the altar, and severing the connection to the dark realm. A shockwave of pure energy erupted, sweeping through the tunnels, cleansing them of the corruption that had taken root. The cultists, their minds freed from the dark influence, collapsed, their black eyes returning to normal confusion and fear etched on their faces. As the light receded, the black-eyed kids, their source of power destroyed, vanished into wisps of shadow, their screams echoing into nothingness. The cavern, once a nexus of dark power, lay in ruins. The threat it had housed for so long finally neutralized. Mark and his team emerged from the tunnels as dawn broke over Eldridge. The town unaware of how close it had come to eternal darkness. The air was crisp, the sky a clear blue, the sun casting away the remnants of the night's terror. In the aftermath, Eldridge slowly healed. The townsfolk, once under the sway of the dark realm, gradually returned to their lives. The memories of their time as cultists fading like a bad dream. Mark, hailed as the town's silent protector, continued his vigil. His home now, a beacon of light and knowledge in a world that had glimpsed the abyss and survived. The battle for Eldridge was over, but the war against the darkness was eternal. Mark knew that other gateways, other breaches, would occur but he also knew that the light, the human spirit, was resilient.
armed with knowledge, fortified by experience, and united in purpose, humanity would stand ready to face the darkness, to ensure that the horrors of the night would never claim the day. And so, the story of the black-eyed kids, their realm of shadows, and the town that stood against them, ended not with a final victory, but with a vigilant peace, a promise to guard the light against the encroaching darkness forevermore.